Hello everyone, let me introduce myself. My name is Uskar Sabil Mukinin and I'm from the Department of Mathematics, Diponegoro University. First of all, I would like to thank to the Master of Ceremony who has given me an opportunity so I can be here to present our research about two factor of the printers for casting based on centroid method for forecasting air quality index. Before we start, let me introduce my team, consists of myself, Mr. Bambang Irawanto, Mr. Bayu Suraso, and Mr. Paritin. Here we go to the discussion today. First of all, I will present to you the overview of our discussion today. There are four sections. First section is about introduction. Second section is about method. Third section is about result and discussion. And last but not least, the fourth section is about conclusions. Here we go to the first section, that is introduction. Fuzzy time series is a forecasting method that was firstly proposed by Song and Chisholm in 1993. It is basically a combination between fuzzy logic and time series forecasting method. So if we want to predict the data in the future, we have to fuzzy by force, we have to build fuzzy logical relationship as a time series forecasting uh, rules and at last we have to defazify the fuzzy set that we got before. Well, fuzzy time series has developed by many researchers. There are so many modifications of fuzzy time series. One of them is the multi-factor fuzzy time series. Fuzz multi-factor fuzzy time series is basically a development of classical fuzzy time series that forecasts the data that is influenced by influence factor. So if we want to predict the data in the future, we have to collect, uh, not only collect the main data that we want to predict, but also we have to collect the, the influence factor that influence the main data that we want to predict. Well, what do we do for this research? First of all, we, do, uh, we use average-based interval to make an optimal interval numbers. Secondly, we use uh, uh, frequency density based partitioning to make an optimal sub interval repartition. And at last, we use centroid method in the modification step. All the modification of the method is applied for forecasting air quality index with PM2.5 concentration as a second factor. Why do we have to predict the air quality index data in the future? Well, uh, if we talk about air quality index, we will not separate it by air pollution problem. Air pollution problem is defined as the occurrence of materials containing materials hazardous chemical composites in the air, which have an impact on health risk living things. There are six air pollution parameters for national ambient air quality standard which can endanger life that are carbon monoxide, lead, nitrogen dioxide, ozone, and particulate matter PM10 and PM2.5. So, it is very important for us to predict the data of air quality in the, in the future because if we predict the air quality index data in the future, we are not only able to evaluate all of the data and all of the policies before but at the same time we can also prepare everything preparation about the data in the future about um, the policies that we uh, have to do and anything about preparation so I think it is very important for us to predict the data of air quality index in the future besides that we PM2.5 uh, particulate matter is so dangerous for us because its size is less than 2.5 microns so it can easily enter our respiratory tracts so it is it is very dangerous for us well we collected the data set from www.ikf.com which used 40 data from 40 days early in 2021 for Samarang City the next section is about methods. In this section, we will present to you a fuzzy time series and multi-factor fuzzy time series and its differences. In classical fuzzy time series, if we want to predict the data in the future, we only have to collect 
the mean data that we want to predict. But at the multi-factor positive time series, if we want to predict the data in the future, we are not only collected, the collecting the data of the main, the main data that we want to predict in the future, but at the same time we also have to collect the data of influence factor that influence the main data. So, um, the other differences of classical fuzzy time series and multi-factor fuzzy time series is basically uh, when we build physiological relationship. In classical fuzzy time series, the physiological relationship is built by the premise that uh, the main factor data at time t is in, it's influenced by uh, the main factor data itself at time t minus, four, uh, minus 1 so it is the time before but in multi-factor party time series the main data at time t is not only influenced by the data of the main factor data itself at time t minus 1 but at the same time we, uh, at the same time uh, it is also influenced by the, the influence factor at time t minus 1 and or it is the time before. So this is the differences between um, classical fuzzy time series and multi-factor fuzzy time series. The result in discussion. First of all, I will dis we will discuss about the step by step to making the method. Overview of uh, the step of our method is firstly we define universal discourse of our each factors. Secondly, we partition using average phase interval and repartition using uh, frequency density based partition. Thirdly, we define fuzzy set for each factors. Fourthly, we build physiological relationship and physiological relationship group. And then we fuzzificate and calculate the forecasted value. And last but not least, we also calculate error value. Well, we go to the step by step of making this method. Well, the first step is we define un the universe of discourse for each factor. Uh, we use u for the universe of main factor and v for the second factor. And step two, we define we define the universe of discourse for each factor using following step. It is basically an average question interval step. First, we calculate mean absolute value. Second, we calculate the range value. Uh, third, we calculate basis, and at last, we calculate number of interval. From calculations, we get number of interval of main factor and second factor data. Main factor data is 16.6809, and second factor data is 13.9435, respectively. Because of the time series data is a single median data, the number of interval is rounded up to the nearest odd number. So we round it up to uh, the number of interval of main factor is 17 and second factor is 13. And then after we get the interval, we also determine the sub interval based on frequency density. The top three highest frequency density is divided into four, three, and two sub intervals equal length respectively. So we get the interval for each factor uh, as table 2 and table 3. The table 2 is a sub-interval of main factor data. There are 18 sub-intervals and table 3 is a sub-interval of second factor data. There are 17 sub-intervals. The step 3, we define fuzzy set A1, A2, until AN for main factor and B1, B2, until BN for second factor. And then fuzzy by historical data into fuzzy set for each factor and then we also calculate membership value of uh, each data in each factor. In step 4, we build physiological relationship based on classification data until we get the alpha r as follows. This is basically uh, an alpha that we, of FLR that we got from the calculation. Well, I will take one of them. The first alpha r is uh, a15 is influenced by A15 at time t is influenced by not only A15 at time t minus 1 but also influenced by B14 at time t minus 1 so it is the time before actually and then by the same way we also calculate all of the physiological relationship 
until we get the physiological relationship as shown uh, on the screen there are uh, 39 uh, 39 uh, alpha are uh, on the screen the next step is we determine forecasting value based on the validation rules using central method which shown as form as follows where m are middle value of fuzzy intervals respectively and last but not least we calculate error value using rms or, or root mean square error and upper value or average forecasting error rate which is shown as following form and then upper value can be can be categorized as explained in table 4 when upper value uh, is less than 10 percent so this the method shows a very good performance if upper value is about 10 percent until 20 percent uh, the method shows a good performance if upper value is about 20 percent until 50 percent the, the method shows a good enough performance and if upper value above 50 percent the method shows a bad perform performance so after long calculation we get forecasted data and its error value as shown as table on the screen where uh, there is a comparison between actual data and forecasted data and we also get the calculation of upper value and RMS value so from the calculation we get upper value is 1.755% and RMS value is 1.672 where uh, according to the criteria of upper, uh, the upper value is 1.755%, which means this method shows a very good performance because it is less than 10%. That we also can determine forecasted data in the next day using following form until we get forecasted value in the next day is 46.72, while the actual data at that time is 48. So at last we uh, we discuss about the conclusion. In this paper, we present a modified fuzzy time series based on multi-factor data for forecasting air quality index. We use two parameters for forecasting air quality index that are air quality index itself as main factor data and PM 2.5 concentration as a second factor data. However, if we are looking for the forecasted data, we need more than one parameter as influence factors. In method, we use average phase interval to make an optimal interval number. We use frequency density based partitioning to make sub-intervals and centroid method for the classification process. In result, we get error value of upper is 1.755%, uh, where according to the criteria of upper, uh, the upper value is 1.755% which is less than 10% which means that this method shows a very good performance so RMS value is 1.972 and forecasted value of future IP value is 46.72 at last thank you for your attention I think that's all I'll give it back to the master of ceremony thank you